George. That moves it up and down that. If you want to get closer. Just, just for one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi folks, we're here today. Boy, it's a good mic this, bro. Yeah. It's a good uh, investment yeah. you made here, bro. Yeah, man. Hi folks, the word of God says, it says this. It says, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Christ died on that cross to heal us of our sin. To bring forgiveness and cleansing and washing by the blood of the Lamb. Now, without Jesus Christ dying on that cross, there is no way of being forgiven. There is no way of being cleansed. You see, God is a holy God. It says in the Bible, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. God is a holy God. And he cannot have sin in his presence. He cannot have that which is evil in his presence and as a holy God he must puke out, vomit, anything that's evil. Secondly, God is just. God is a just God. Our laws have rules. If you murder, you will be punished. If you rape, you will be punished. That is like the nature of God. God has a just nature and must punish sin. God must punish sin. He has a law. Do not lie. He will punish liars. Do not steal. He will punish stealers. Do not commit adultery. He will punish adulterers. Don't have any gods before me. First gods before me. Worship any other gods before me. He will punish. He is a God of justice. But, he's a God of mercy. And at the cross, we see the justice and mercy of God. You see the justice of God that he must punish sin. He must punish your sin. And instead of punishing you, Jesus Christ stepped in your place. He became the offering for your sin. He became the payment for your sin. So when they arrested him, when they nailed him to the cross, when he had a crown of thorns upon his head, he was your substitute. He was dying in your place. And the wrath of God fell upon Jesus for your sin and rebellion and that which you have done wrong. Your sin and rebellion and you're breaking the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, your sin and rebellion meant that God had to punish sin, and that sin he punished that you did, he punished on his son. And Jesus Christ died on that cross and took the punishment for you, so that you could be set free today. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he was crushed. He was bruised. He was bruised and crushed by the Father. The crush by the Father for you on that cross. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you trust in Jesus Christ, you will be forgiven. Wow. You will be restored, you will be clean, but if you reject that cross, you'll be lost for eternity in hell. The Bible says, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you confess your sin and believe in Jesus Christ, you can have been a prostitute all your life, you can be forgiven. You can be a murderer all your life, you can be forgiven. You can be a porn addict all your life, you can be forgiven. You can be an effort of Jeffa swearing all your life, you can be forgiven. Because he paid your debt. He paid the debt for you on that cross. Now, there is no other name on the heaven and earth where you can be saved. You can't be saved on the Buddha. You can't be saved on the Mohammed. You can't be saved on the Charles Darwin. You can't be saved by Pierce Morgan. 
can't be saved by the Pope, you can't be saved by the bishops, you can't be saved by the Archbishop of Canterbury, they can't save you, they can't do diddly squat for you. When you die, you come before your maker and your maker is going to kick your butt on judgment day. Now, if you don't want your butt kicked on judgment day, you need to know that Jesus had his butt kicked for you. That he died on your behalf. He shed his blood for you. It was costly sacrifice. It was costly sacrifice. It cost him the blood of God. The blood of God, it says in the book of Acts, was shed. The blood of God was shed for you. Listen, have you lied today? Have you lied to your boyfriend? Have you lied to your girlfriend? Thou shalt not lie. Have you lied to your girlfriend? Have you slept with somebody and lied to your girlfriend and said, I had slept with anybody, you lied to your girlfriend? Have you been lying? Have you been lying to your boyfriend? He was crushed for every lie that you have done. He was crushed on that cross for every lie that you have done. He shed his blood for your lies. Have you ever lied? I say, have you ever lied? Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Thou shalt not steal. He died for your stealing. He died for your stealing. Mate, that's mine, mate. Mate, that's mine, mate. That's right, mate. That's mate. That's mine, mate. He died for your stealing. He died for your lying. He died for your adultery. He died on that cross. He gave his life for you, my friend. Shed his blood for you. So may you know his love today. Please come and know that wonderful love. Birmingham. Birmingham. Our country is dying. We are the zombies walking into oblivion as a nation. We have corruption in every area of national life. We are a nation that is blind. We are a nation that is falling apart. We are a nation that is crumbling. Unless we pull up soon, we will know the wrath of God and we need to pull up soon before the wrath of God comes upon our land. Amen. Amen. The wrath of God is coming upon the nightclubs, coming upon the police, coming upon parliament, coming. Every person of this country will know the wrath of God if this nation does not wake up soon. Amen. This nation has to wake up soon or you will know the wrath of God. Amen. We have to wake up as a nation. Amen. We were a Christian nation once. We honored the Bible once. We honored Jesus once. But we are trampling it on the ground and we are throwing our heritage to the dust and we are treating it as if it was nothing and we will not get away with it as a nation. God will roar like a lion upon Britain. And Britain will be no more. Our army will be no more. Our navy will be no more. Our parliament will be no more. We will be crushed under Jehovah, the mighty living God. We have to wake up and wake up soon. You need to wake up and smell the roses. You need to wake up and realize our nation is crumbling before your very eyes. We have great leaders like Churchill. We have great leaders like Nelson. We are led by dodos. We are following dodos. And we need to wake up as a nation. Come on, bro. We need to wake up before it's too late, my friends. We lovingly preach to you. We lovingly come to you. We lovingly give you the gospel. We lovingly share the gospel to you. But if you keep trampling under the gospel, if you keep mocking the gospel, if you keep rejecting the gospel, then the wrath of God will kick in upon our land. And my friends, when God roars, no police force will be able to stop it. No parliament will be able to stop God's wrath. When God roars, this nation will shake to the foundations and men and women will cry out, mercy, mercy. 
So have mercy upon yourself now Amen. and turn while you can. Why do you think that you should have all these shops and all the pleasures of this world when the country is dying and starving? Why do you think you have all this luxury? God has been merciful to you and given it to you. But you have started to love it more than Him. The time will come when God will call a time upon Great Britain. And the time is soon. The time is soon when God will rule upon this land. My friend, you are sleepwalking into a nightmare. You are zombies going to the slaughter. And you need to awake. You need to awake soon. Political correctness is like a weight round your neck. And God will bring the fiercest judgment upon this land for following such nonsense. He will bring wrath upon this land and He will show you that He is the living God and you will regret ever mocking a preacher. You will regret ever standing and stamping on the Bible in this land. Bro, are you going to stop talking shit? The wrath of God is coming. What the fuck are you talking about? Don't swear, bro. Why? Why? Because it says in the Bible, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, bro. By the renewing of your mind. Whatever you believe, we respect, but we're here to preach the Bible. We're trying to preach the gospel, bro. This nation needs God. Judge, judge, judge. That guy, that, that guy's alright, that guy's alright. That guy does. Stand with that guy, he's a good guy, he's with us, yeah. This guy. We as a nation need to change. We as a nation need to get right. We as a nation need to come and realize that our politicians have sold you out. Your politicians have sold you out. Your religious leaders have sold you out. They have ditched the Bible. They have ditched the Word of God. And they have sold you out. And you are blind and you are being led by blind leaders who are blind and they have sold their spiritual heritage out. They have squandered the word of God. Parliament is a complete joke. Parliament is a complete joke. She will not bow the knee to Jesus and she will not bow the knee to the Son of God. The Queen has not honoured her office. The Queen of England said that she would stand for Jesus and the prominent faith and the Queen has failed to stand up and allow things that have come in to this country that are immoral, such as abortion. Amen. The Queen has failed to stand up for the faith. Amen. Parliament has failed to stand up for the faith. Yes. The Archbishop of Canterbury has failed to stand yes. up for the faith. And we are a nation now in free fall. We are losing our free speech. Our arm is a joke. Our navy is a joke. And we are led by dodos. Dodos. We have to wake up. Men have to start being men today. And stand up and be a man. And stand up and make a stand. And say enough's enough. Before it's too late. Politicians have to stand up and say enough's enough. We're standing on the Bible. Amen. The media has to start popping out lies. The BBC, they have to start popping out the Bible. Amen. When was the last time the BBC interviewed a Bible-believing evangelical pastor? They won't have them on because they're biased. They want to press their political connect agenda. They do not want to give free speech to those who believe the Bible. Amen. The devil has this nation by the balls. And unless you cut yourself free from him, you are in free fall, my friends. God bless you. Remember William Tyndale, who got the Bible in English for us, he was killed for you. Remember Wycliffe, who got the Bible for you in English, he was killed for you. Remember John Wesley and George Whitfield, they preached up and down this land so that you could have the gospel and they were punched and they were kicked out of Rochdale. They were kicked out of London and they preached the gospel. But what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? 
You're blind and you're zombies and the end will be destruction. And we have cried and we have pleaded and we have longed that you will be saved, but you will not listen. And now, now, the curtain will fall and the wrath of God will come. God help you. May revival come to this land. May God save this land by revival. Because if revival does not come to this land, then this land is doomed. You are doomed. You are doomed as a nation. I'm ashamed of this nation. I'm ashamed of our land. I'm ashamed that we have ditched the Bible. We have ditched our heritage. And we are like pigs wallowing in the sand, wallowing in the sow. And I'm ashamed of our country. I'm ashamed of our nation. I'm ashamed of Parliament. I'm ashamed of the MPs. I'm ashamed of them. I'm ashamed of what they've done to us. We've turned our land into a mess. We need to come home. Come home to Jesus, my friend. God bless you. That was, that was powerful, that man. Bless you. God bless you. How did you turn it off, Chase?